Hello everybody and welcome to my 1 to 99 magic guide. Now magic is by far one of the most diverse skills in the entire game and because of that it's actually my favorite. Now today I'm going to be showing you a couple of different routes to get 99 magic. One of them is going to be very balanced and cost effective. One of them will be the absolute quickest and the other one will be a cheap and AFK way to do it. Now this guide is mainly going to focus on information you need to know to actually train the skill but there's a ton of other information out there. Now to start off here, why exactly would you want to level up your magic? Well, there are so many different reasons, but I'm going to list a couple of them. Now first up here, it unlocks all of the different teleports around Gilinor, which is going to save you a ton of time, and it's worth getting done early because of how much time it's actually going to save you. Magic is also an integral part of many different bosses around Gilinor, and having a higher magic level will allow you to kill them quicker and more effectively. Now magic is also incredibly important to level up because it actually adds to your magic defense level, which protects you from magical attacks. 70% of your magic defense is actually determined by your magic level and not your defense level. The other 30% of course is defense. And finally here we have the actual 99 cape, the magic cape, which arguably has one of the most useful perks in the entire game. Magic has four separate spell books, but the 99 cape allows you to switch between all of them from anywhere up to five times a day. This is incredibly useful and can save you a lot of time in the long run, as I think it's actually worth getting 99 if you're thinking of doing it. Now the magic skill actually has four different spell books for you to use and for this guide we're going to be using the majority of them however as to not dump too much information on you at once i'm going to be giving you the information as we go and when the training method comes up as to not just dump a bunch of information on you at the start however just as a quick overview of the different spell books first up here we have the standard spell book which is the one everyone has access to immediately the standard spell book has a good mix of everything including teleport spells combat spells and utility the next up here we have the Ancient Spell Book, which is unlocked after completing the Desert Treasure Quest. You won't need to do this immediately, but I would highly recommend doing it by the time you get to level 70. Desert Treasure is primarily a combat focused spell book, which is very useful for PKing, but, but it also offers the highest training experience rates in the game, which, which means it is definitely important to get in the mid game. There is the Lunar Spell Book, which primarily focuses on utility spells. I personally really like the Lunar Spellbook and there are a lot of good options on here and I will include a couple of them in this guide. But again you probably won't be using it too much until above level 70, as so you won't need it immediately. Now the final spellbook is the Arceus Spellbook, by far the least useful but also it's pretty easy to unlock. Only requiring 60% favor in the Arceus house, that one is pretty easy to get done. Now the Arceus Spellbook is kind of weird in its current state, uh, so weird in fact that it's actually going to be reworked this year so it may look very different in the next couple of months but it mainly offers teleport spells and utility spells. Now beyond Desert Treasure and Lunar Diplomacy, which I would highly recommend doing to unlock the spellbooks, there are a couple other quests that you could consider doing. At level 1 you can complete Witch's Potion and Imp Catcher, which will immediately boost you to level 10. It is a nice boost, but magic is incredibly quick, so it's definitely not that important. Now I would recommend trying to complete Monkey Madness 1 and ideally Monkey Madness 2 as quickly as possible as these two quests respectively will unlock the best training locations in the game for magic. The only other magic centric quest that I'd recommend doing is Dream Mentor, which actually unlocks additional spells for the Lunar Spellbook, but again not a super high priority. There are of course other quests that offer magic experience, but those in my opinion are the most important. Alright, so let's get started with the Balanced Route. Now, the Balanced Route is what I would recommend to the majority of players. It will be the most cost effective way to get 99 in my opinion, and will be a good balance of speed and GP cost. Now, from levels 1 to 7, the easiest way to level up, and one of the only ones, is casting Strike Spells. The only items you will need for this is an Air Staff, which you can buy right from the Grand Exchange, around 100 Mind Runes, and 50 Water Runes. All you will need to do is equip the air staff and go kill a few monsters. Any monster will do, so it's really up to your own personal preference. Personally, I like coming down here to the goblins, it's kind of nostalgic for me. And simply all you're going to do is continue casting the air strike until you get to level 5. At that point, switch over to water strike and do that to level 7. Now, assuming that you have a staff of air equipped, you can auto cast the spells by clicking on the spell icon down here. Select your spell and now you will have auto casting enabled. This should cost you less than 5000 GP and should really only take around 5 minutes. Now from level 7 to 27 I would recommend casting the level 1 enchant. Now normally enchanting rings of recoil are very profitable, at least for that level. 
Now to do this, you want to equip a staff of water and have a stack of cosmic runes in your inventory. You'll, you'll need around 519, but don't worry, you will be making money on every cast, as this level chunk will earn you actually around 100,000 GP. Now all of the enchant spells will enchant your entire inventory automatically, but it's going to be much slower than manually casting it. You're going to get roughly half of my listed experience per hour if you just let each one autocast on its own. So I would highly recommend doing it manually. Yes, it's a little bit more clicking, but it will get you a lot more experience in the early levels. Uh, so casting level 1 enchant can get you around 30,000 experience per hour, which means it'll take you only around 20 minutes to get to level 27. Now from level 27 to 43, we're going to be doing something pretty similar. We're going to be casting the level 2 enchant. Now I would recommend doing this on Rings of Dueling, but any emerald jewelry will do. You will need to enchant around 1,100 Rings of Dueling or whatever you choose. Now if you are enchanting manually, you can get up to 60,000 experience per hour, which means this will take you around 40 minutes to get to 43. Now from 43 to 55, I would highly recommend casting the Superheat spell. It gives you incredibly good experience per hour at that level, and on top of that it will actually give you a bit of smithing experience as well. However, that does mean that on top of a level 43 magic requirement, this also has a smithing requirement of 15. Now superheating any bar will get you up to around 95,000 experience per hour, which means to get to level 55 will take you around 1 hour and 15 minutes. Now for superheating, I would highly recommend taking advantage of bank fillers. If you withdraw all of your nature runes and remove the bank placeholder, you can go up to your menu settings and fill your entire bank with bank fillers. At that point, you can hit the deposit all button and your nature runes will stay in your inventory. Now for superheating, I'm personally a fan of only doing around half of the inventory, banking and then withdrawing again. This allows you to keep your mouse button in the exact same place, which means you can superheat around 10 items, bank and withdraw again, which I find quite a bit easier than moving your mouse around to superheat each ore. Now unlocked at level 55 magic is the high alchemy spell and it's a really good training option uh, for a wide variety of methods. High alchemy can range anywhere from usually break even to reasonably profitable depending on the item that you are alking. Now there are many items in runescape that you can buy directly from the grand exchange for less than their high alchemy price. Now all you need to do is take the high alchemy price of an item and subtract the cost of a nature rune which, which at this time is around 180 GP. Now if you manage to buy your item for less than that, then that means you're going to be making some money on it. Just for two examples here, we have the diamond bracelet and the magic longbow. Both right now are profitable and you're actually profiting over 100 GP per cast, which is very good. Now high alking is very simple and you can get up to 75,000 experience per hour. Now high alking can be extremely low effort because you can alk noted items, which means you can withdraw a giant stack of high alchemy material move it right under where your high alk spell is and just go to town. I would highly recommend enabling mouse keys for this because then you can just hover your mouse over the high alchemy spell and kind of just spam out the 5 key over and over again. Now high alking from levels 55 to 70 will take you around 7 hours and 30 minutes so it's going to be a fairly long chunk of time. You will need around 8700 nature runes but you should be able to at least break even on this if not make a bit of money. Now if you do want a quicker but more click intensive route, you could think of tele -alking. Now essentially this method is combining two spells at the same time. Now because you can cast these spells back to back without any delay, you are able to cast two spells in the time it would take you to normally cast one high alchemy spell. Which means for every high alchemy spell you can also sneak in a Camelot teleport cast. This will nearly double your experience per hour but will cost you a bit more money and of course will require more clicking. It does take a little while to get used to the rhythm of it, but essentially you want to cast a high alchemy spell and then immediately a Camelot teleport, wait a couple in-game ticks, and then cast high alchemy again. Now if you do have enough money, I would recommend buying the smoke battle staff because it counts for both air runes and fire runes which will save you a bit of money going to 70. Now if you do this from level 55 to 70, it will take you only around 4 hours, so a significant improvement, and will cost you around 650k, although in this case I would actually probably break even overall because I'm making money on the high alchemy. Now if you don't want to do either of those methods, another option is casting the level 4 enchant from level 57 to 70. Again, this method is normally at the very least break even, and can get you experience rates up to 110k per hour. It is less click intensive than tele alking but a bit more annoying than just regular alking. Assuming you are manually casting each enchant, you can get up to 110k per hour which is very good, which means getting to level 70 will only take you around 5 hours and should be around break even. Now starting at level 70, you unlock one of the best methods in the game and that is ice bursting. It's so good and fairly cost effective that I would recommend doing it all the way to 99. 
Now Ice Bursting is definitely the most involved of the training methods, but also once you know how to do it is pretty AFK and really is an excellent way to max out magic. Now there are two main training locations for Ice Bursting, the Monkey Madness 1 tunnels which obviously require Monkey Madness 1 to be partially completed, at least to the point where you unlock the tunnel, and the best location is located in the Monkey Madness 2 tunnels which, you know, unlocks after completing Monkey Madness 2 or at least partially completing it until you unlock the tunnel, which granted is fairly near to the beginning of the quest and will only take you around 20 minutes of a 2 or 3 hour quest. Now Ice Burst is so effective because it can hit actually up to 9 targets which means if there are a lot of monsters around in multi-combat you can stack them up and get a lot of magic experience. Now for the purpose of magic training, magic has one really weird quirky part to it. Your actual magic level does not increase your max hit beyond the fact that you unlock higher level spells the higher magic level you get, but for the purpose of Ice Bursting there is very minimal difference between level 70 magic and 99 magic. The only thing that will actually increase your max hit and thus increase your XP per hour is percent magic damage stats which can be found on a few different items. Now some of these items are very cheap and some of them are very costly. Now in order of importance and also more or less the cost, we have the Occult Necklace which I would highly recommend buying, there's no reason not to do it. It's only valued at 290k and is ridiculously overpowered, will increase your max hit by 2 points in most cases. And at the bare minimum, I would also recommend having the Tormented Bracelet, which will give you another max hit. Now beyond that, the next most important upgrade is a Kodai Wand which is very costly but is actually going to save you a lot of money and will increase your experience per hour very notably. I do understand not everyone can afford this because right now it's actually 90 mil for it. However, just keep in mind this will give you an additional 3 max hits and will save you nearly 10 mil on your way to 99 because it does have a special effect that has a chance of saving you runes. Now the only other items that matter after that are the Ancestral set but it's a very minimal change at that point and they're very expensive. Now beyond those items I mentioned, the rest of your gear actually doesn't matter. For the purpose of increasing your damage and your XP per hour, it's very minimal. Now the reason that is true is because pretty much any monster that you would actually train on for pure magic training have no magic defense, which means your magical accuracy, which is gained from a lot of these other items, makes a very insignificant difference. It's so insignificant in fact that you're better off actually maximizing your prayer bonus because at that point you'll spend less time running around picking up prayer potions and you'll spend less time restocking. As to be on the magic damage boosting gear, I recommend having devout boots if you can afford them, a Ceridome investment top and bottom, these are very cheap, a miter, a holy blessing, a seer's ring, a book of darkness. Now for your inventory, you're going to want to bring the runes to cast Ice Burst. A rune pouch is useful, but not required by any means. We're going to be training on Maniacal Monkeys in the Monkey Madness 2 tunnel, and they actually drop prayer potions, which means you don't actually need to bring your own, which does save you more money. A stamina potion just to get there, but for the most part, we're not going to be running around too much for magic training. The Candorin headgear is just a light source. Alternatively, you can bring a candle and a tinderbox just in case it goes out. The Monkey Grigory is required to get in there if you haven't completed Monkey Bandits 2, which these last two items here are totally optional, but the Bone Crusher will give you passive prayer experience, which is incredibly useful. We'll talk a bit more about that later. And the Holy Wrench will give you a bit more prayer restoration per potion, but again, not that important. Alright, so we're going to head over to the Monkey Bandits 2 tunnels, and unfortunately getting there can be a little bit complicated, and the path is different for everyone, just to make it a little bit worse. Keep in mind this will be the same path you have to go during the actual quest, so if you made it that far you need to follow the same way. What I would recommend doing is start following the exact path I'm going. If you reach a dead end, try one of the alternating paths and you should eventually get to the end location. I find tile markers are very helpful to remind you which way to go, because you will end up having to come back this way quite a few times. Now once you get to the end you'll find this hole in the ground. Now it actually does have a peek option on it which is incredibly useful. By peeking in the hole you can see if anyone else is down there because otherwise you need to go down, run a fair bit in, and check if someone's there. Now Bursting Maniacal Monkeys is very popular so it could take a little while to find a world but keep world hopping and eventually you will find one. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this. There's a very AFK way and a more intense way. Now to try to maximize your experience per hour, you'll actually have to actively click on each group of monkeys. 
you're looking for a 3x3 square of monkeys because that is the maximum range and will lead to getting the highest experience rates. However, a fairly comparable method involves just running into the middle of the room and just leaving auto retaliate on and that's it. With the gear I have, at the bare minimum, you should be getting at least 220 or 230k per hour. But I would say that's definitely a conservative number because even fully AFK and sometimes you can get higher than that. Now the only thing you need to keep in mind is eventually the monkeys will lose aggro after 10 minutes. At that point you just have to run a little ways back towards the entrance that you went down until they're aggressive again and then just run back right into the middle of the room. Now you will notice that they are constantly dropping per potion doses but you won't have to drink them very frequently because we have maximized our per bonus. You obviously do have to make sure your prayer doesn't drop or else you're going to be taking a lot of damage from the monkeys and you will pretty much immediately die. Now to get all the way to 99 magic from 70 is about 12.3 million experience. That means roughly you're going to need to cast Ice Burst 60,000 times which is a lot. Even at a fairly conservative rate of 220k experience per hour, it will take you around 57 hours to get 99. Now if you compare it to the Kodai, it does make a very big difference. Now the Kodai not only increases your DPS, but it also reduces your costs. Those two combined are very impactful. With the Kodai, it'll only take around 52.7 thousand casts of Ice Burst, and you'll get experience rates usually up to 250k per hour. With the Kodai, it'll also only take you 50 hours to get 99 magic, and will cost you 28 mil versus 38 mil it'll cost without it. Uh, so it is a very significant difference, so if you can afford it or can borrow it from someone, highly recommended. Alright, so that means after everything has been said and done, the total cost to get 99 magic with the balanced root is around 38 mil if you don't have a Kodai and around 28 mil if you do have a Kodai. Uh, so definitely a significant difference and the total time investment will be 65 hours with a Kodai or 55 hours without one. Alright, so next up here we're going to talk about the quickest possible way to get 99 magic. This will obviously be a bit more expensive, uh, but obviously it's going to be quicker. Okay, so starting off again from level 1 to 7, we're just going to be casting the strike spells once again. Once again, you'll need less than 100 casts, and it'll only take you around 5 minutes. Alright, starting at level 7 is actually one of the quickest possible training methods in the game, and that is enchanting crossbow bolts. It's actually so good that theoretically you could do this all the way to 99 and retain with some of the highest experience rates in the game. But the reason this is not really viable for long periods of time is the amount of bolts that you need to consistently be enchanting is way too high to collect even on the grand exchange. There are buy limits that restrict you from buying these items in huge amounts of bulk. So really we're just going to be taking advantage of this at the lower levels. Now to get the highest possible experience rates for this you do need to do something that is called one tick enchanting but it's actually fairly simple to do. Now essentially all you need to do is get an unenchanted bolt in your inventory with the required runes. From here you will hover your mouse over the bolt enchant spell, the level 4 one. Now while holding your spacebar you're going to click on it pretty much every tick. Now if you're not really comfortable doing this I would highly recommend turning on the metronome plugin for rune light. It is extremely helpful when you're not really used to the tick system too much and it'll definitely help you get the highest experience rate possible because if you're not clicking on time it will lower your experience rates. Now we're going to go from level 7 to 27 enchanting sapphire bolts. This will take around 519 casts and really should only take a couple of minutes. Now going all the way from levels 27 to 49 you'll be enchanting emerald bolts. Now enchanting bolts can be very expensive, uh, for example even at this low level going from levels 27 to 49 will cost you just over a mil. That said if you are enchanting them correctly you can get up to 200k per hour which is incredibly high for that level which means that will only take you around 25 minutes. And finally from levels 49 to 55 I would just go ahead and enchant rubies. It will cost you around 1.5 mil but can net you up to 300k per hour as uh, so that will only take around 15 minutes. Now obviously if you do want to sporadically continue doing these past 55 you can definitely go ahead and do that. But for larger amounts of experience, I don't think it's very viable to put into a guide because it would take you a long time to stockpile enough bolts to actually enchant. Now similar to the balanced guide, from level 55 to 70, you, you will be tele alking Camelot again. Again, this will take you around 4 hours and will get you around 140k experience per hour, so definitely less, but it's going to cost you way less, and of course you can consistently do it. Now starting at level 70, once again we'll be casting the Ice Burst Bell, but this time we're only going to do it to level 88. Now if you do have the money to go with this method, I would assume that you would have a Kodai Wand, which means the experience rate here is going to bump up to around 250k per hour, and the cost will lower a bit as well. 
So to go from level 70 to 88 will take you around 15 hours and will cost you around 8.3 mil. Now from levels 88 to 94 you can start casting the Shadow Barrage spell. The XP rates get up to around 330k per hour very consistently and uses the exact same technique as Ice Bursting. Going from 88 to 94 will cost you around 20 mil but will only take you around 11 hours to complete. And finally, from levels 94 to 99, the quickest possible experience in the game that is consistent is casting Ice Barrage. Ice Barrage in Maniacal Monkeys gives you some of the highest experience rates in the entire game, up to around 345k per hour if you are even kind of AFKing, and even higher if you're paying attention. To get to 99 will cost around 21.3 mil, and will take around 15 hours. So that means in total the time to get to 99 magic using the quickest possible route in the game is roughly around 45 hours and will cost you around 53 mil. Alright the final route I want to go over today is a much slower way to do this but it's also profitable and extremely AFK and I know that's kind of desirable for a lot of people. Now from levels 1 to 57 one of the most AFK ways to train your magic is just by casting the strike spells on crabs. Ammonite crabs are the best because they have the most amount of health, but sand crabs are alright as well. Now the crabs will remain aggressive for around 10 minutes at a time, which means you can AFK for 10 minutes. Now assuming that you are casting Fire Strike, you're going to get around 22,000 experience per hour. Now to go from levels 1 to 57 is going to take you around 9 hours, and will only cost you around 140k. Now from levels 57 to 86, we're once again going to be enchanting diamonds, but this time we're not going to be manual casting it, we're going to be letting the inventory enchant itself. This is a really AFK and often profitable way to train your magic at that level. If you're letting it automatically enchant, you're going to get around 55,000 experience per hour, which means to get from levels 57 to 86 is going to take you around 62 hours, but will most likely profit you a bit of money or at the very least be break even. Now from levels 86 to 99 we're going to be taking advantage of the very first lunar spell and that is the plank make spell. Now plank make is one of my favorite spells because recently they added in a, an auto casting feature. Now normally you can do around 1700 casts per hour manually which will give you around 150k per hour but if you let it auto cast you're going to get around 90,000 experience per hour while also profiting money. The GP to XP currently is around positive 2.3 which means for every experience you gain you're also going to gain around 2.5 gold. However, to do this, you do need to be casting the spell on Mahogany Logs because they are the only ones that are normally profitable. You're going to need to cast the Plank Make spell around 105,000 times to get all the way to 99, which is going to take a whopping 105 hours, but in the process will profit you around 22 mil. So taking a much slower but AFK and profitable route will take you around 175 hours to complete and will profit you around 20 to 25 mil. Now how do these routes compare? Now the balance route will take you around 55 hours with the Kodai and will cost you around 28 mil. Now if you want to go with the quickest possible route you pretty much need to double the cost up to 53 mil but that will save you an additional 10 hours. And finally here we have the Sloba AFK route which will take you 175 hours so pretty much three times longer than both of those other routes but will actually net you a profit of around 20 mil which is a pretty big difference. Anyway guys that's going to be it for today's guide I really hope you found it useful. Let me know what guide you'd like to see next and maybe we'll go ahead and make it. Now before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. A huge thank you to Ocelot, Kush Patel, Brad Sings, Brian Robinson, Zach Stoppa, and Cappy who all subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. Thank you again. Joining Base Titch, Birdbot, Grumpy Chef, Timothy Chen at the Runite Tier, and of course all of you guys. I really appreciate you. If any of you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do it. You'll get access to my video release schedule, get a custom role in my Discord, as well as be immortalized in all of my future videos. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.